pits of your own soul, burning to ashes your spiritual form. These are four heads of the devil that is within the nature of the human being that have to be taken off. These heads have to be taken off and there must be a murder to do it and the murder must be according to a plan and it must be premeditated. Right. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Now, I know some of you just want to kill white people. I think that shows a sickness. Because wanting to kill a fiery natured person who is killing himself and not wanting to kill that in you that makes you a victim of his fire is actually putting the attention where the attention doesn't belong. The attention does not belong on the white man. The attention belongs right on self because if we master self, he can't master us. That's why we used to call him the slave master because he can only master one who is willing to bow down to him, but he cannot master a free thinker. He cannot master a free person. He cannot master one who is under control. Are you listening? Yes, now give me a few more minutes, all right? <laughs> you know, this morning, I began to think about my conflict with the Jewish community. And it took me back in time to when I first became a Muslim. And I want to share this with you for whatever it is worth. I used to be in show business. And I loved it with a deep, deep passion. Music is like a god. It demands obedience of you. It demands that you bow in service to it if you want to become great. In any field of endeavor, it demands sacrifice. Okay, when Malcolm X told me that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad desired that all musicians either leave music or leave the mosque, it took me less than five minutes to make up my mind that I could live without music, but I couldn't live without truth, so I gave up my music. I had never worked a day job but once in my life. And they worked me so hard in that factory that day <laughs> for the very little pay that I got. I decided that I was so grateful that my mother gave me music. Not that I, and I want to say this, I learned respect for the labor of a laborer. Because brothers and sisters, those of you who work jobs on a daily basis and work in factories, you work very, very hard for very little pay for what you get. And it must be disheartening to you to work eight hours and only make maybe 24 $25 a day. When they put on television all these fine things that you really want, and when you look at your paycheck, particularly after they take out Social Security, which you probably will never live to get, or they won't have it by the time you're old enough, at the rate it's going. And your little monies that you have to learn to live with and you party so hard <laughs> and you're just so crazy with what little money you do get till before you get on speaking terms with your pay it is gone so Monday you're right back at it again with no pay hardly enough money to get back and forth to work now brothers and sisters this is a shame this is a form of economic slavery you agree 
Well, when I gave up show business, this is the truth. My first job, I had to work six days a week for $35 a week. I was a salesperson for storm screens and windows and doors. I made 35 raw money. If I sold anything, I'd get a little commission. I mostly made $35 every week. I'm only, t I'm only telling you the truth. My next job, I worked in a restaurant. And I had a, a West Indian mother, bless her heart. When I wanted to do things in the way of we had oil trucks in those days and used to carry ice and coal because they didn't have refrigerators. We had ice boxes in those days. And I wanted to work the oil truck and my mother didn't want me to work the oil truck. She wanted me to play my violin and practice and she would do the hard labor, but it kind of spoiled you in a sense. So I went to work, man, in a restaurant and they had me washing dishes. And I washed them well, but I washed them slow. <laughs> I mean, certain things you just not cut out for, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I worked hard at it. I really worked hard. After I finished the dishes, the lunch dishes, I just got them finished around dinner time. <laughs> and when the dinner was over, I was working you know, into the night. Then the man asked me to cut some potatoes. And I had never peeled potatoes before. So I peeled off half the potato in the skin. I'm just telling you the truth. Then he asked me to mop the floor at night. You know, I was sincere, dedicated, committed. But the broom, I mean, the mop was one of them heavy commercial mops. <laughs> And I just wasn't used to hand it, so when I threw the mop one way, I'd go with it. <laughs> so the next day, they worked me so hard that day, this is the truth, I overslept. <laughs> so I called down and said, look, I'm on my way. He said, don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> when you can come down, you can pick up your pay. I made $12 that whole day. But I was willing to do this for Elijah Muhammad's sake and give up my music. Finally, brothers and sisters, I went to Boston where I grew up and got a job in the garment section. Now this is way off my, my subject, but it's really on my subject. I went in the garment section and they said, well, you got too much education for this job. I said, but I got two children and one on the way. That's enough education for the job. <laughs> I got to have this job. And that's one thing my wife will tell you about me. I'm committed to feeding my family. And I no work was too bad for me to do to earn an honest, living to take care of my wife and my growing family. And I say this to all of you brothers. If you really want the love of a woman, fight hard to get what it takes honestly to take care of her and the children that you produce from her and you produce a woman that loves you, honors you, and she puts it in the children to love you. She can tear up your future by putting seeds in them children's head, brother, against you. And most of our women talk against their, the fathers of their children. And you're not even around, brother. Sometimes you really don't care. So you make a baby and run off, but that woman is there with that baby every day. And she gets hot because you don't work, you don't send no money. And she takes it out on the chair and you look just like your no good father. <laughs> and that poor boy or girl begins to hate the father because of the way the mother is training it. 
and it's really our fault. But I, I want to get away from that. I got a call from a Jewish nightclub that I used to work at in Long Island called the Golden Slipper. I used to work there with some of the fine Jewish comedians, Mort Saul and some of the big names that you know today that are Jewish comedians. I used to work with them. They were the star of the show, but the people came to see me. Because I was one heck of a performer in the line of the calypso, the dancing, the singing, etc. The violin I had put aside by them because I couldn't play classics in nightclubs. At least they weren't ready for that. <laughs> but they paid me, these Jewish persons, paid me $150 a week. They wouldn't raise me. When I quit, now I'm up in Boston in the garment section carrying bolts of cloth on my shoulder, racking it. I get a telegram from my former boss, name is Schneider and Goldman. They're now offering me $350 a week. Mind you, I'm making 45. And when they take out Social Security and the tax, I get $44.10. Now I'm offered $350 to come back to New York and work for them. I quit working for show, in show business. The Jews had mastered that one. I'm now working for another Jewish company in Boston for $44.10. So this Jew in Long Island calls me to come back to work for $350. I called him on the phone. I said, uh, Thank you for the offer, but I'm doing fine, and uh, no thank you. I'm doing fine, making $44.10. Turned down $350. This is in 1956. When you make $350 in 1956, that's like $1,250 today, brother. I want you to hear this. I gave up that kind of money. My friends thought I was crazy. And in truth, there's no logic that will make you understand a man giving up his career and big money for God. I mean, God gave you the talent, you should use it, you know, make some money. <clears throat> now here's the point I'm getting to. There was a black brother working with me. His name, his nickname was Snow. <laughs> there was another Jewish fellow that worked along with me as a cutter. Snow was a cutter, and the other Jewish fella was a cutter. I was just like a stock boy, grabbing these big heavy bolts of cloth and piling them in racks. But I was young and strong. But they noticed that I didn't eat. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us to eat one meal a day, and that's what I would do. So the Jewish lady, who is the wife of the owner, called me in the office and said, why don't you eat? <laughs> What's the matter? You don't want to eat? Something wrong? I said, no, I, I only eat once a day, and that's in the evening. What? I've been watching you, and it seems to me that uh, it seems to me you're trying to get a hernia so you could sue us or something. <laughs> this is the truth. I said, no, ma'am. I said, it's my religion, you know, and I only eat once. What is your religion? I said, my religion is Islam. I'm a Muslim. Well, that spread all through then, you know. All right, now, I come to work on time, I work hard. I don't bother anybody. But now look, this Jewish fella came to me one day. We used to talk. He said, you know, you're very smart. He said, I believe you are really smarter than Elijah Muhammad, and you should be the leader. And look at this. Here's a man, and see, this is why we call them devils. See, when you don't know them, how they operate. See, that's a subtle seed in the heart of someone who's vain or egotistical to make you rise up against your teacher. 
So I said to him, I said, Frank, I said, you remind me. Your statement is, is ignorant, and it reminds me of when you were in the hills and cave sides of Europe. No, 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 listen. I said, can you imagine one of the caveys telling another that you are smarter than Moses who came to deliver you from the cave? When I dropped that on him, he knew that I knew, and I knew that he knew. And we were locked then in a battle. Now I'm trying to get snow to the temple. So it's like the scripture says, Moses and, uh, I'm sorry, Satan and Michael contending with each other over the body of Moses. Here's this Jew and myself. We are fighting each other over snow. I'm trying to get snow to visit the mosque so I can teach him some sense. So he wouldn't be calling himself snow and allowing the white folks to call him snow. And the white boy is saying, snow, I'm going to lunch. I'll buy you lunch today, Snow. And Snow looks at, oh, hey. <laughs> the white boy comes back, opens up the bag. It's a fat ham sandwich. Now, he's a Jew. He don't eat it. But he gives it to Snow in my face. Then he looks at me as if to say, I got this nigga. You understand? So all the way back in 1956, it was me contending with a Jew for my brother in a little place. Now I'm contending with the Jew on a national and international scale for the total liberation of black people. I'm on my job. I'm on my job. I say that I did not know that that would be my job. But God gently guided me into a mission and then locked the door where I can't get out of it. So I'm locked now into a struggle that appears to be an anti-Semitic man when in reality, I don't hate Jews at all. In fact, they are worthy of admiration for their mastery of the fields that they master. But they are worthy of condemnation, some of them, for the evil that they have done in such a subtle and secret way that you think that they are something that they are not. As a result, the scripture says, that day shall not come except there be a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed. Not a spirit of sin, but a man of sin be revealed. Reveal means uncovered. Yeah. If he's revealed, is to be revealed, he's hidden. And the Jewish wickedness has always been hidden because they manipulate their less fortunate Gentile brethren to do their bidding. They have manipulated the Gentiles. In every nation in Europe, they rose to prominence and power. And they have no allegiance to no nation. They only have allegiance to themselves and world Jewry and the conquest of the Jews and mastery of the Jews over the world. Now others know this, but they don't have the courage to say it. I know it and am born, am born to go to the mountaintop and tell it whether it means my life, but it means your freedom. The man of sin must be revealed, uncovered, 
so that we can fall away from him and see him for what he is and then take the appropriate step. Now, Farrakhan's challenge of their evil has caused them to outright lie on me. I mean, it's an outright lie. And I watch every time they condemn me, they walk in behind a lie. He called Judaism a gutter religion. Lie. He praised Hitler. Lie. Then they come in behind that with, yes, he's an anti-Semite. And we're condemning him for the evil things he has said about Judaism. But if you took the time as writers and went back and listened to my tape, you never hear any reference to Judaism. Not one. I refer to a dirty religion. Not what Moses revealed, but the practice. Notice how I said it. I said Israel has not had any peace in 40 years. Did I lie? I said, and Israel shall not have any peace because there can be no peace structured on injustice, thievery, lying, deceit, and using God's name to shield your dirty religion under his holy and righteous name. That is what I said. Now, now, you can infer when I said dirty religion that I was referring to Judaism because Judaism is the religion of the people of Israel. You can infer that, but I did not say that. And no matter how much I say that what God revealed to Moses that is chronicled in the Quran, in the Torah, I as a Muslim am bound to obey it, respect it, and honor it. So I could never have been talking about the religion of Moses. I was talking about dirty practice that religious people use to dirty the face of their religion. And Christians have dirtied Christianity. Don't tell me, brother. Jesus didn't preach no dirt. But what is this you practicing in his name? Talk back to me. It ain't nothing but pure, unadulterated filth. When you can use religion for imperialistic designs, going into Africa and ripping up Africa in the name of Jesus Christ, and some Arabs going behind, ripping up Africa again in the name of Allah and Muhammad, that's practicing dirty religion. And I don't give a damn who practices it, a Muslim, a Christian, or a Jew. If you, your actions are unclean, leave the prophets out of your yes, mouth because no prophet preached dirtiness or imperialism under the name of religion. Right. Muhammad did not preach imperialism. No, Moses didn't preach imperialism. Jesus didn't preach imperialism. He said, take the doctrine, the gospel, to the ends of the earth. He didn't say, use it as a tool to rob the people of their dignity or to make them you. He didn't want Muslims to go in Africa and make those people Arabs. If you preach the religion properly, it never would make a black man an Arab. It would make him himself because the nature of him is righteousness. That's all I'm saying. Now that is not anti-Semitic. But the Jews know that they are guilty. So in order to stifle any criticism against themselves, anybody that would criticize them, they paint them with the broad stroke. He's anti-Semitic. Then they push it through you know the kind of control they got when the president would rebuke me. Well, who is Reagan? He's not your friend, is he? Oh, 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 oh. The Senate 
censured me 95 to nothing, <laughs> saying I'm a racist, but that's an all white body. With over 30 million of us, we ain't got one black senator, but they can condemn me and you talk about I'm a racist, these bastards condemning me on racism. <laughs> You say, Farrakhan, don't let your passion melt down your knowledge. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? That's hypocrisy to condemn me, the victim of racism, as being a racist because I call the shots like I see them. I said that the setting up of the state of Israel is a criminal conspiracy. I did say that. But then don't call me anti-Semitic because I said that. Because your Bible teaches you that the Jews were to wait for the Messiah. You got nearly a million Hasidic Jews that do not believe that Israel is legitimate because it didn't come from the Messiah. Nearly one million Jews, are they anti-Semitic? They marched on the UN when Shimon Perez spoke there. And you didn't see that in the newspaper. But they had big picket signs saying, you should have waited for the Messiah. I didn't go and tell those Jews what to put on the placard. But they put it on the placard bearing witness to what I'm teaching. But they're not anti-Semitic. They are passionate Jews. But I'm anti-Semitic because I'm black and I dare to tell the truth. Now, beloved, I say that to say this, to come to the making of a man of God. And I shall not complete this subject today. I shall only start it. Because it's too heavy to complete. Making a man of God or making a God is something that God does. And the way he forms his creature, his servants, is something to behold. The scripture says God formed Adam from the dust of the ground. That's very heavy. Because when God wants to make a man, he doesn't start with a man that has already been made. He starts with something that is considered nothing, dust. And the scriptures of both the Bible and Quran symbolically say he fashioned him really from nothing. And if you look at what you come from, what you come from, what we come from, it is sperm mixed with ovum. And in that first state of our existence, we are considered nothing. If you, and I'm not being vulgar, but if you came to sit down and you saw some sperm on the seat, you would not sit on it. In fact, you would get away from it and say, what nasty person has been here? But that's your beginning. And your beginning if it is not done in the manner prescribed by Almighty God, if it is not placed in the proper environment at the proper time, sperm anywhere other than where it belongs is considered disgusting. Am I lying? Yes, That's your first state. It is a disgusting state. But that sperm, so small, that you could put